Racing is rough on cars. Speed, by its very nature, is inherently powerful. The forces exerted on a car's frame, suspension, and brakes rise exponentially as you get faster. On top of that, the stress that high RPMs put on an engine and drivetrain are actively working to kill the car. That being said, few forms of motorsport are quite as brutal as rally racing, where you often don't even get an actual road to compete on. Rally cars are forced to look at a different set of challenges than your typical race car. They have to sacrifice big, powerful engines to be as light as possible. They have to be able to survive dirt and gravel and ice. But the biggest challenge the engineers have to face are the politics of the sport. And a simple rule that allows only street legal production cars to participate. Which is no problem for the big companies like Audi and Ferrari. But the most iconic of all the rally cars came from a small Italian company called Lancia. This is the left pedal, and today we're talking about one of the most special cars ever built, the Lancia Stratos. The Stratos went through some serious design changes before it became a championship winning race car. At the time of its conception, Lancia's go-to rally car was the Fulvia, a surprisingly capable, funky looking little car that was getting too old to keep on selling. Bertoni, a legendary automotive design company at the time, was interested in working with Lancia. So interested, in fact, that they took a Fulvia and had designer Marcello Gandini turn it into his vision for their next race car. They called it the Stratus Zero, and it essentially looked like a giant triangle. Legend has it that when Lucillo Bertoni took it to Lancia's factory, the car was low enough to drive right underneath the security barrier. Long story short, Lancia loved the triangle, and they decided to go forward with the project. The production car would be called the Lancia Stratos HF, meaning high fidelity. Unlike most of the cars it would be competing with, the Stratos HF was not going to be a street car with a tuned up racing version. It was a pure, concentrated race car that was obligated to have a street version. The car was 146 inches long and 70 inches wide. It was only 44 inches tall, and it had a super short wheelbase at 86 inches. For reference, the wheels are about 20 inches closer together than on a modern Mustang. It was a tiny car. The short wheelbase and wide track width were designed to allow the car to change directions quickly without losing too much speed. It made it harder to drive at speed, but it was an Italian race car. The driver's nerves weren't really a priority point. The whole thing weighed a little over 2,000 pounds. The body was built with lightweight fiberglass. For the frame, they chose steel over lighter aluminum to keep the car from ripping itself apart on the racetrack. Steel was also easier to repair. The body, designed by Bertoni, is wild to look at. Every single line on the car is aggressive in its own quirky, unique, very 70s way. The Stratus was powered by a 2.4 liter Dino V6 from Ferrari. It was a desirable engine. Beyond the fact that it was developed by Ferrari, it was incredibly compact and packed a punch for its size. Getting the Dino engine was no easy task. Lancia and Ferrari were both owned by Fiat. The Stratus' sole and only purpose for existing was to win rally races. That's it. No concessions. Most Fiat executives at the time didn't see profitability in a limited production race car. On top of that, they didn't want this little company competing with their golden brand, Ferrari. So they shot the idea down. The very dedicated people working on the Stratus kept fighting for it, but they couldn't get the higher-ups to budge. As a final play, Lancia went straight to Fiat's direct competitor, Citroen, and asked if they could use an engine from Maserati, to which they got a resounding yes. This was an absolute winning move for Lancia. If this car was really going to win races, Fiat wasn't going to let it happen with their competitor's engines. They reluctantly let Lancia have the Dino engine, and the results would turn out to be well worth it. The Lancia's 0-60 time clocked in at 6.8 seconds with a top speed of 144 miles an hour. The car's suspension was another important selling point. Not only did it have to be capable of delivering excellent handling under all sorts of conditions, it also had to be extremely durable. It was equipped with a double wishbone front suspension and adjustable McPherson type struts in the back with some extreme skid plates underneath to protect the components. The Stratus was able to navigate sharp corners and tight bends at high speeds. It was a precise little race car, but according to his drivers, it would get really squirrely when pushed to his limits. The machine was incredibly capable, but it required full concentration and somebody very good behind the wheel. For such a purpose-built machine, it was gifted with an awesome interior. Absolutely tiny, but still quite high quality and very Italian. 
According to the rules of the World Rally Championship, Lancia needed to build at least 500 of the cars to compete. As you might imagine, building 500 cars is pretty expensive and pretty time consuming and also no one knows if they actually did it. Legend has it that when the inspector showed up, Lancia had about half the necessary cars in their front parking lot. They had the inspector do his thing and after he finished counting those, they did him a favor and took him out to lunch. After their nice long meal together, they took him to their other parking lot which happened to have the other half of the cars. It was a long road and it took a lot of fighting and determination to make the Stratos happen. Throughout its production, Lancia had some drivers testing the car in competitions. They would find suspension issues as well as other problems, which was a good thing. The car needed someone to beat it up and push it to its limits so that they could find and upgrade all the weak points. In 1974, it was finally homologated into Group 4 Rally Racing and started to phase out the Fulvia as Lancia's rally car. It took the championship win marking a success for the project. By 1975, it was completely and utterly unstoppable. Lancia ended the season with 96 points, 35 more than second place, which happened to be Fiat. This new car was so good at its job that it was almost unfair. It was the unprecedented, ultimate rally car. Every other car in the series was now obsolete. The Stratos would win three consecutive seasons of the World Rally Championship, 74, 75, and 76 until eventually a change in the rulebook no longer allowed the Stratos to compete. The car would go down in history as a triumph of perseverance. It was a vehicle built solely to win races, and that's exactly what it did. It's a car surrounded by myths and legends, and it's a testament to what can be accomplished by determined minds. Thank you for watching, and a special thank you to everyone that subscribed to us here at The Left Pedal. More videos are going to pop up on the screen somewhere, so watch them.